Welcome to the Keepers of the Golden Gate, session 28, we're rhyming now. It's the 30th of November 2019, I'm Ryan the GM, here are the players. Hi, I'm Callum, I play Eric Greenwood, the human sorcerer. The sultry human sorcerer. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Adrian, I play Arya Bluebird, the half of Druid. Hi, I'm Scott. I play the Crumbar, who is a half orc paladin. Hi, I'm so fit. So, so I can do this today. <laughs> oh, I thought you were saying, Hi, I'm so fit. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was the only one mishearing it like that. No, it's... Try that again. Oh, I'm Rose so fit. Blip, blip. <laughs> <laughs> I play Kitty Lakill, aka Kitlith Amastasia, who is a wood elf rogue. <laughs> Hello, I'm Stuart. I play Reach a Half Elf Monk. Oh yeah. dear, that was good. Is your is your intro just gonna get more and more complicated? <laughs> I <know. laughs> I'll eventually drop the freaking Kitty the Kill bit once all the in-game characters mm. know the name. Yeah. Plus, I'd <gasps> like the fact that as Kitty's kind of intro gets longer, Scots will just become Crumbar. Eventually, <laughs> no, <laughs> Scots will just become Ugg. <laughs> Love that you say yourself <laughs> in the third person. My god. <laughs> <laughs> right. I hope everyone's in the goals sheet, because that's what we're going to talk about after we talk about what happened last time. So, what do you remember Stuff. from last time? Things. I uh, redecorated um, Eric's garden. You did? That was fun. <laughs> yes, both of us did. Mm -hmm. yep. I got myself Each there. in our own way. <laughs> 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 yeah, I got a, um, a familiar. Mm -hmm. Yep, got yourself a fancy magic hawk. Yep. No, you didn't get a familiar. You fired one out of a pot. <laughs> that's how you get a familiar. I mean, that's uh, says wow. so in the tin, you know. <laughs> yeah. Right. So garden, gardening. Yep. And then anything else besides gardening and getting a familiar? We're at dinner. Yeah. Dinner. Mm hmm. Nice, non awkward, completely normal dinner. Yeah, With easy. some really rude people suddenly starting talking a language nobody else could understand. Mm. Yeah, I know, Stuart. God. At least, at least we had someone telling us where it was infernal or not. I expected one of them to be rude anyway, but yeah, the other one was a surprise. A lady. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, well, I mean, there's like the kind of big thing, I think, is like we actually met, met like all of Eric's family, kind mm -hmm. of. Or not all of them, but, you know. All the, the ones, ones we knew. All the, one, the, the ones that are a bit. <laughs> That's true, yeah. Um, yeah, there was an interesting dinner, there was some gardening, I got to meet the family. Haven't really met much of Madeline, but she is at the table and she has pretty much just ate her food fairly quickly and just watched everyone talk about things she doesn't understand and in languages she doesn't understand. So, yeah, there is that. Uh, there was a bit of chat about what Livian's had to go through as well and also, yeah, that's pretty much it really, I think. I don't think there was much else besides the, you know, Grand Theft brazier. <laughs> Um, from last time as well, and that poor old woman just trying to get her grandson, you know, wed. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Yep. <laughs> How can I forget? <laughs> 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 oh my god. Yep. This is the top quality RP you come for. Yep. Just abandoning an old woman and her grandson. <laughs> yep. Um. So. On that note, goals for this week. Eric. I'm fine with mine. Okay, okay, which is legitimize trade with Horizon. Mm -hmm. Are ya? Same here. I still want to learn Infernal. Mm -hmm. Works for me. Crown Bar. Um, I'm cool with mine. Um, yeah. Learn more about the tribe of orcs attacking north. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yep. Kitty? I'm still fine with mine. Finding a way to shut the hell things without needing what's name's help. <laughs> the princess. Sorry. Yeah. That's yeah. Okay. And Reach? 
Happy with mine as well. Cool. Perfect. Right. That was easy. Uh, which is get word to the Great Gold Worm about Gil. Okay. Let us jump back into the game then. So, dinner obviously hits that ever so slightly awkward note of Infernal being spoken at the table. Not only by Crumbar and understood by Arya, but seemingly understood and spoken by Lady Decana Saphir also. Um, as dinner concludes, does anyone have anything else they wish to do that evening? Perhaps speak yeah. to anyone? Or do they want to... Yeah? I want to speak to Lady Saphir. Cool. So... Do you grab her in the hallway as she is leaving, or like how does this play out? You tell me at what point you try and make a, and you try do you make it private or do you talk to her in front of everyone? Like you just des you describe the scene to me. So, if we're doing this after dinner, after hearing her speak in Perino, I just kind of go quiet for the rest of the evening, like the rest of the dinner, mm -hmm. and then as everyone's kind of. You know, had the fell and kind of moving away and stuff like that. I just kind of walk up to her and be like, "We need to speak in private, Lady Sophia." And uh, I'm assuming since she knows the place better, I'm hoping she will, you know, <laughs> take um, me to some place of privacy talk. Uh, no, she'll actually go and speak to Eric then, if that's the case, and she'll ask him uh, for somewhere in private to speak. So okay. Decana heads over to you, Eric, as obviously everyone's being ushered out of said dining hall. And she says, your friend wishes to speak to me in private. Is there a room we could use? I kind of tilt my head and look at her and go, you can use the study if you wish. And then um, you hear a voice cut in there. It says, Unfortunately, the study is in use at the moment. You'll need to uh, find Livian. another room. And yes, it's Livian, um, <laughs> who is just drawing you daggers right, like from behind the canna, just as if fucking kill you. <laughs> um, I guess uh, the garden's generally quite quiet, so you could take a stroll through there. And then she says, um, like Dakana says, how lovely. And then she kind of looks at you, Eric, kind of grabs your like, forearm with both hands and says, could you get one of your servants to fetch my coat? Of course, and I kind of call one over. Yeah, and they'll obviously run away, because obviously it's night time now, so it's a bit chilly, and obviously glittery Hagen at night. So they'll go off, grab her coat, come back. Um, yeah. So you are led to the garden, Crumber. Do you wait till you're out in the middle of the garden, or do you want to talk on the way? No, I'll wait till we're in private out in the garden. Um, so once we're there, um, I'll just turn off look around to kind of see, make sure that there's no no one else around. Do you want to make a perception check? Perception. Sorry. This is where I'm going to get a 1 and it's like... I'm also just going to put in session 28 Oop. as a wee marker as well. Oh, 15's okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, doesn't seem like there's anybody around. Now, uh, is anyone trying to follow out in the garden to listen into what Crumber is trying to say to her in private? No. No. Well, they seem to be talking thingy. Orcish, aren't they? No, yeah, no. So the, there's no point in doing The kind has been speaking in common. Or, um. like, Imperial, I guess. Uh, so, Arya or Eric, are you just wanting to try and sneak out to listen to them? 
Uh, nope. How are you? Part of me is tempted to send through, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, that's okay. Like, well, yep, you're good. Too. Well, what happens is like, so I feel that uh, Crumbar has been, you know, showing good faith and trust in me recently, mm -hmm. especially with the entire, you know, Mistress of Fire thing and helping me make heads and tails of it. So I'm going to trust him that he's not going to essentially tell this lady too much stuff that he shouldn't or whatever. Basically, I'm going to try to trust him because he's been making an effort to trust me. That, that's kind of, So I'm, I'm going to leave it be. Yeah, that's a good one. I like it. So, Grumbar. Mm -hmm. Go for it. <laughs> right, so you turn out into the garden, you go like maybe somewhere between the garden maze and the stone garden, right? And then, um, mm -hmm. yeah. She kind of like just slowly walks beside you quietly. And as you like stop and look around, and she kind of looks at you, kind of very like a, a, a bit unnerved looking, right? She maybe looks a bit unnerved. She kind of clutches her coat a bit around her, and she says, um, "Are we being followed?" Uh, obviously, I've, I've looked around and checked the place, so I would just reply, "I can't tell that anyone's around. I don't notice anyone. I think we're." I think this is private enough. And what did we need such privacy for, Mr. Denebuk? Hmm. An infernal, or just say to her, you know why. She smirks. She doesn't say anything back. She just smirks. Just back in common, or just start saying to her, it's like, so it was strange enough to find out that you knew Orkish. I, I, I'm intrigued as to how you learnt Infernal. It's not a language easily taught. And she kind of just stares at you for like a while as if kind of drinking you in, you know, visually. And then you can clearly see that she's like come to a decision in her head and she's like, Neither am I, so easily taught. But the money helps. I've never heard of anyone teaching Infernal for money. Where did you learn it? And she kind of like looks, like down the path of the uh, like the garden, and she just says. Do you share everything about yourself, how you came by your skill? If the right question is asked. So just by anyone, so long as they ask the right question, you'll happily share? Do you keep nothing for yourself? I have nothing to hide. Is that so? And she, she looks a bit like she's, again, a bit in deep thought at that. She's kind of it's staring at you, or kind of, mm. kind of staring through you, because you are a bit taller than her. What height's going for? <laughs> like what? Seven? Six foot... Two seconds, I'll tell you right now. He is six foot two. Yeah. Because she's maybe five, five nine. It's so. like, she is seven foot nine. <laughs> <laughs> In heels, maybe. <laughs> um, nah, she's about five nine. Maybe that, a lot of that is the, the footwear she's wearing. But yeah. <laughs> And then she just kind of, like, she just says, walk with me. And then she starts to walk down the path. I, uh, you know, as she said that, I just kind of, say, lead the way and follow her. Yeah, and then she says, as you kind of, like, catch up and step with her, she says, I want to do my part for this problem. North. And she kind of like nods at you as she says that. And 
what is it about? Sorry, trying to think of it how I want to word this. Yeah, that's okay. Um, why are you so eager to help us? Do I look eager? I merely want to be useful. Isn't that what you want? To be useful? I just kind of gesture around the whole, like to the entire estate, mm -hmm. being like, well, it seems you've been pretty useful so far. What what makes this problem so important? Eh, so, no, so... Eh, crap, I can't remember the word I'm looking for. It's okay, what is it you're trying to say? And we'll, we can assist. <laughs> That's it. Uh, what makes this problem such a priority? It seems like one I can be effective in assisting. You have an orc problem. Not you specifically, of course. And she kind of smirks at that. I am. Um, Don't we all? <laughs> and then she uh, she says, "I can be useful." It seems like your group, and she kind of like narrows her eyes a bit about that. It seems like your group could use useful. I definitely think you should be coming. A you can be useful, and I will speak on your behalf to the group. She kind of like grabs your like your kind of arm. I would say bicep, but she probably goes for your forearm, and mm -hmm. she kind of like almost kind of like holds it as if kind of like you know, like one arm kind of hooked underneath it. Um, your big thick orc arm, and she says, "That would be wonderful." I appreciate the faith and trust. Not something that comes easily from me. And I hope to be worthy of it. I feel that you know a lot more than you're letting on. And I'm hoping that you will be able to shed light on some information that I've been looking for. Light isn't always helpful. In this situation, it would be. And she looks around in the dark garden and she kind of laughs a little bit. Um, <laughs> she goes, I couldn't agree more. She goes, are we to walk more or could we return? It is chilly after all. I just have a few more things to ask you. And she kind of like she lets go of your arm, and she kind of like grabs it like her kind of cloak, cloak combo thing, and mm -hmm. like kind of like wraps it up and goes, "Of course." What do you know of the King of Hell? And like her face grows up, and like her neck kind of like reels back a little bit. Like, the King of Hell. And then she, uh, yeah, she just looks a wee bit confused and goes, I, I'm unsure. Does ki does hell have a king? Why not a queen? I don't pick the monarchy. She smirks and she goes, neither did we. <laughs> and she like leans in a little bit. Um, Sorry, I'm just thinking of Game of Thrones and the hound's like, fuck the king. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. And yeah, like, she does that kind of motion, like, she knows she shouldn't be saying that, because obviously she's just had a go at the wizard king there. Yeah. You know? And obviously that's frowned upon. <laughs> Not by me, I think he's a penis. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. So she just, yeah. Mostly it's a bit of confusion as if you're giving her new information or unusual or strange information that there's a king yeah. of hell. So I think once that kind of clears and you have that little joke about monarchies, she mm -hmm. says, I think it would be more pertinent to ask what do you know of the king of hell and what should I know? Very, I, all I know is a name. 
but it's a name enough to scare me. It is a frightful thought. And she kind of looks like again a bit in deep thought, and she obviously like looks slightly down at the kind of the path as she's got her arms across her chest, like holding her cloak a bit, and she's like, "How did you learn of this King of Hell?" Through the adventure that this is taking us on, I will explain more if the party agrees for you to come. Do you foresee any reason why they wouldn't want me with them? Your safety. I guarantee it. That will be it. She smiles. Not even like a smirk or anything, just like, like a genuine smile. And she says, I hope so. So you know nothing really of a king of hell or any fire related entities? She smirks again. No, I didn't say I didn't know anything about fire related entities. And kind of off the cuff. I say. Apparently there is a mistress of the flame as well. She narrows of her eyes again. She like, oh, and what exactly is a mistress of the flame? Is this the queen of hell? And she smirks again. Well, I've kind of felt, I was hoping she might have had an answer. I'll go, I don't know who it is exactly or what it is. I've just heard the name in passing. Cool. Can you roll deception for me? Deception? Yeah. I'm gonna make an insight check. Good not to mention who, but anyway. Yeah. Boop! <laughs> Sorry! Hey, I still, need, I still need to make a roll, so don't worry, I might roll less. <laughs> no, you're rig. You you rig things. That is untrue. How dare you? Uh, <laughs> right? Do they have this as a score? They do. Is this? That's public. It's fine. <laughs> well then. Yeah. So, kind of stares at you as you're kind of talking to her, and she says. Do you think this issue with me going on the adventure, as you put it, is something that we won't be able to overcome? So basically she's just dodging the entire thing about Mistress of the Flame. Because, mm -hmm. yeah. Damn <laughs> it. Like, honestly, guys, in my mind, I was like, right, she can speak Inferno. She must have an interest in that kind of stuff. Yeah, but... So she must, like, so I'm like, she must know information about... However, about she knows you're hiding stuff about it. So... Mm -hmm. That's maybe why she doesn't really care to entertain that conversation, you know? Well... Bet she got to buy me dinner first. Fuck, she did. Um, <laughs> well, she didn't actually. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> um, but yeah, so she pulls the conversation back to her getting on this adventure. And obviously, is it something that you two can't overcome? Mostly she's wanting to know who's likely yeah. to oppose her going on the adventure. As I say, I will speak to the party, and then I just kind of pause for a minute, and I'm like, I'll speak to Eric <laughs> um, about you coming, as I do feel like you ha you will be a very useful asset. She smiles I again. I think there's more than what you're willing to let on. I wouldn't like to give you all my secrets or my 
uses just yet. And she kind of smirks again at you. And she shivers a little bit and she's like, Was there anything else you wanted to speak of? She looks around, like, kind of jokingly, as if looking out for people watching. Just kind of out of a wee bit of respect, or just like, kind of smart, like, smile back at her <laughs> and go, No, my lady, you're get. I can see you're getting cold as well. We should head back inside. And then, as you go to walk, she again like does that thing where she hangs onto your arm again as you're walking back, and she says, "This was pleasant. It was nice to speak with you, Crumbar." And then, like, she, likewise. And then she kind of like pats your arm a little bit, and then she says, "But please, it's Dakana." I say like her. Uh, likewise, Dakana. And then it's been um, sorry. Um, it's nice to be able to use my native tongue again. There's not many folk that speak Arkish. And then she says a phrase in Orkish, which is um, what somebody like a family member would say to you when you came back from a successful like raid. It's just like a kind of again a generic phrase, mm. like a welcome home, or you know, you had a good hunt. Like it was no question of it. You know, that type of rewarding statement, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, it's the kind of welcome home word that she uses in Orkish. And then, yeah, you just head back inside, yeah. Yep, yeah. yeah, works on me. Cool. Uh, is anybody else going to grab the canna before she heads off for the night? Um, also, God, quite... why does everyone love me? <laughs> also, the reason I'm asking is, when do you just want to leave for whatever you are doing next? Because if you, for example, if you want to have this conversation about her going, maybe have it before she leaves the building, with her or without her. It's up to you guys. But you just maybe want to have that conversation. So maybe she'll head off um, to go get her things ready for departure. Um, you know, like her carriage and such outside. Uh, Crumbar, you head back in, I, and I guess you go back to the party, wherever they are, lounging in some kind of lounge. Satin and trips. He walks in with like trackies. Tavpa. Follow a back fast and, uh, you oh, know. Dear. Ken deck of Mayfair. So bad. <laughs> uh, unless somebody, like whoever else in the party, did you just want to do something while Crumber was off having his romantic walk in the garden? Um, I'll go speak to my older sister. Okay. About yeah. the tree. She'll be in the study. <laughs> I can guarantee it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, uh, I thought, I thought, uh, thingy was your older sister, the, the Drekka. No. What's no, the name? The Drow. The, 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 the Do not insult me. Wow. Um, <laughs> I'm a noble race, thank you. A noble racist, maybe. Um, Drows are noble. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Nobles are racist, Noble. right? Wow. Elves, usually. Yeah, wow. wow. Um, right, okay. You head to the study, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah just gonna... I kind of like go to open the door, mm. pull my hand back, and knock instead. And then you hear um, like something fall off, like a table type sound, like a kind of metallic clanking noise, and you just hear a uh, swearing, like "fuck." Yes, what is it? Come in. I just open the door and go. Why are you swearing? And then you walk in, and you see that she's like spilled over like a little kind of brass kind of dish that had a candle in it that's fell off the and she's just starting to like hit at it with like a scroll like a something rolled up kind of piece of parchment <laughs> so she's caused a little fire she's mostly just trying to put out a spilled candle yeah can I shoot her with a ray of frost Shoot your sister with a rare frost if you want. No, no, no. Real, real initiative. Not... I think she can take you. <laughs> Wait, what? She, I mean, she's older. She's a clearly a higher level, right? <laughs> right. Well, 
one, one, one might think. I don't know. I want to shoot at the candle. I'm gonna put it out for her so she doesn't have to like faff about. Right. Okay. DC ten to hit it. No, that's a that's a D ten. You need to roll your spell. Roll oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> so, I'm ill. I'm ill. Leave me alone. <laughs> Oh dear. Aww. Do we need to explain the ins instructions again? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so like, you kind of startle her a bit, and she like kind of recoils back against like one of the, the bookcases. As like a massive patch of like frost just instantly blasts that kind of area. And she's like, did you really have to do that? I had it well in control, and like the end of the parchment's on fire that she's holding. <laughs> Yeah. She just waves that out and then it goes out. So, I came up here to speak to you about one, I wish to take the Kano with me to the expedition up north to get her out of your hair, because I know you don't like her. And two, I need you to do the uh, trade deal with Horizon in my absence. You kind of left me hanging on an answer earlier. Hmm. And then she just... Like, she just exhales and, like, rests against the bookcase. And then, like, her head dips a bit. And she just, like, drops the, the kind of parchment thing beside her as it slightly unfurls. And she just says, kind of... Kind of towards her knees. Like, the way she's facing. She, like... So you're leaving again. Hopefully for not too not too long this time. So only two months instead of three? And she turns and looks at you with that. I just kind of sigh and say, I'm needed. Do you have a real insight? It's up to you. You don't have to, but you can. <laughs> yeah. She's got a look that creeps over her face when you say, I'm needed. And you're not sure if it's her being upset or her being angry. Uh, okay. I know I'm needed here, but the world needs me to do this. Yes, you're a princess of the order thing. She kind of nods. <laughs> I just like kind of shake my head and go, can you do the trade deal for me? Do I have a choice? I don't want the family estate to, you know, fall because of me. She kind of like stands up and like dusts herself off a bit and then picks up the parchment and then goes to lift like the, the kind of frosted can and just thinks better of it and just puts the parchment on the table. You do have a choice. You don't have to do it. I'll do it. I want to get back or whenever, but it'll be done. She kind of just stares at you for a bit. And then she says, No, that's okay. It's my job after all, to look after the family. What do you need me to do? Um. What should go? Legitimize trade with Horizon. What you yeah. want to do? <laughs> Reach, how did you get in my private study? Yeah, we about <laughs> yes. I'm just, just thinking. I'm not. I'm not well, so it takes a while for the cocks to turn. Slower than you usually do before anyone jumps in. Not saying anything. Like and subscribe and put them in the comments. Sass in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> uh. 
um, initially just send a message to Horizon to Justoria or the official yeah, like the office of someone. the princess, yeah. Yeah. And uh, I don't know, open negotiations, see what they uh, they can offer us, see what we can offer them and go from there. A uh, rule persuasion on this you leaving etc cool and then a look you're all too familiar to, with kind of takes over a living and she kind of straightens herself up and it's kind of like business mode living you know this is the now we've all agreed on the story we're telling our parents right when he's got into trouble living the one that, <laughs> you know looks out for everybody and then um, she kind of nods and she's like, How long will you be? Do you know? Unfortunately, no. And she kind of nods her head a bit and she's like, Anything I can do besides this for you while you're gone? Um, find something suitable for me to take to Horizon so there's a chance we can track our parents. It has to be one of our parents' items. Objects. I think I know just the thing. I'll do that. And then I think we could probably fade out on that scene there, because that's probably quite a good place to leave that scene. Unless you have anything specific you want to ask her to do yep. beyond that now. Cool. Um, Maybe a whole slot. That's fine. <laughs> And then you can head back to wherever everybody else is. So I think like maybe you walk in one door of like this kind of drawing room type thing, uh, and Crumbar walks in the other at the same time. There's like a big open fire at one side of it, like a bunch of like big long couches and such. There is also a bar, but yeah. <laughs> Crumbar is going to the bar. <laughs> <laughs> what a surprise! Yeah, it's all in fancy glass bottles, the crumber. <laughs> oh, the I captain. can be fancy. Mm. Never said you didn't, no fancy. You have a, you carry a, a golden carafe with you. <laughs> Damn you're, straight. You're fancy. <laughs> I'm gangster. I know how to roll. Um, and just like that, you went. Mm -hmm. And just like that, I got kicked out of chat. <laughs> <laughs> do do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, okay, so, these are all in the one place. I just kind of clap my hands together and go, So, are we taking Lady Sophia? Lady S.A. Uh, Fire with us. <laughs> There's no way you're the I end. Would. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I just kind of step up and be like, I think it's best if we do. I think it should be a valuable asset. Into wherever the other three are, and like my hands being like held together from the clap, just kind of spread apart, like and you guys. I don't care as long as you don't try killers, sacrifices, or that thing. Potentially dangerous. Do we think we can take her if it comes to a fight? Because we know nothing about her. Can she defend herself? Hey, I got a new axe. I'll smash her up. <laughs> I mean, oh, they don't, I was going to say, they, say, someone like, yeah. they chop. To be honest, we did have a child <laughs> yeah. with us for the longest time, so... And we lost that. <laughs> that. Yes, but that wasn't yeah. really our fault. That was because somebody that was very powerful wanted him. Imagine the Wizard King just Jack. turned up and took. The kind of from you as well, though. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, you have well, someone new. Mine. This is my vase. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness! Just that he's actually yeah, gone mad. That, that would be interesting, <laughs> but um, like, like I don't know. I think the situation is is slightly different. Mm -hmm. Um, she probably has a lot of knowledge on various things and it might be useful that way but yeah she definitely would have to hide behind us just saying
Mm. Currently, other than she speaks Orkish, and we've already got a translator, we haven't got any reason to take her. Mm. Is she still here, do we know? What do you mean, in the house? She's just packing yeah. the bags. Uh, yeah, she... like, you, you've got time to go grab her before, like, keep in mind, Crumbar just came back in, so she'll be heading towards, like, her carriage outside. Cool. Um, I'll go ask her, see what she um, can offer us, and head toward outside. Right, okay, let's see. She's a vodka, is she? Apparently that's, so. That's Jen, you uncivilized <laughs> swine. <laughs> totally. Does anyone have passive perception above 15? Or 15 or above? Where are you sure? Passive perception? It's below your skills. Sorry, I close throw 20 again. Because I am good at this game. Anyone? Yes, above 15 you said, right? Yep. I've got 16. Cool. 16. Um, Pretty sure mine's is like 11 <laughs> or something terrible like that. Yeah, that's fine as well, Kumba. Reach. 12. Cool. So, Arya um, and Kitty both have. <laughs> Wait, mine's is 10. <laughs> Lol. That's even worse than me. So, your passives Mine's are. Your shoes are on, but that's about it. Yeah. These are both 16, yeah? Yes. Oh, I am. Yeah. Yep, cool. Um. Yeah, you just can tell someone's outside the room. Was it Crumbar? I <laughs> like Cat senses of tingling. Try to like stealthily, but like you know, still swiftly, if that makes any sense. Make my way to the door. I yeah. feel like we'd, we'd swing look it at open. each other. Like we'd look at each other, and be like. Yeah, like, maybe there's like, like a tiny creek that, sort of that both like. use here. Yeah. yeah. And like we both go and stand on either side of the door or something, kind of thing. Yeah. And then like swing it open. Yeah. Yeah, and the kind of standing there as if she was about to like open the door, and she looks up and says, "Oh, hello." Oh, it's just you. Okay. I go sit back down. And then um, she's kind of like holding her um, coat over her arm. She kind of, kind of steps into the room. Says, it was just to say goodbye, and she's looking straight at Eric. Ah, uh, well, it's failed me. <laughs> so, if you um, are just kind of standing, like mouth open, <laughs> she then <No>. says, <laughs> "Just so dead." Then she says, "Would you walk me out?" I like. Shake my head and go, yes, of course. And she kind of looks a bit embarrassed to anyone else looking at her. Because um, obviously, <laughs> you know, she had to ask. And then, she got caught. <laughs> yeah. And then um, she kind of just very curtly nods her head at everyone in the room. And then turns and goes with Eric. So, did you say anything to her on the way out? Or just walk quietly with her. Leaving so early. She kind of like looks around. Like obviously your lighting is all on, mm. and such candles lit and such. And she's like, "Is this still early for you, adventurer?" And she smirks at you. I give her a groom back and go. Yeah, some days. I'm wondering if you'd uh, like to stay and learn more of each other. Give me a second to she rules insight. Let's just do this public though. Let's do a public rule for insight. So, um, yeah. She kind of like screws up her face, like you've insulted her, and she takes a qu like a like a half step back, and she says, "At least three dates before she stays in night." Yeah, she's like Lord Renwood, I'm not that kind of lady. I just look at her and go, "No, no, I just want to know what you could offer for the expedition." She like narrows her eyes, 
a little bit and just looks at you suspiciously. Honest, I had nothing but pure innocent intentions here. She looks at your face softens a lot and she goes, I think you're anything but pure or innocent, Lord Rainwood. <laughs> and then she puts her coat in your hand and she says, could you let my driver know I'll be staying? And walks back towards that room. Okay, I'll go talk to a driver and tell, her, and tell them. Cool, yeah, and you can dismiss the carriage, etc. He says he'll be back in the morning for her, etc. And then that scene can conclude itself and you can all head back to the study, I guess, or wherever the lounge type thing you are in. Um, so yeah, she said goodbye, everybody's in the room. If it had been a rom-com, you'd all been at the window as he took her outside into the front garden, etc. And then you'd all be pressed up against the window, but it's not, <laughs> so that never happened. Um, do you use... <laughs> Do you have any conversation when he's away taking her to like the front door? In private, away from Eric? About the specific conversation he's just had? Which head is he thinking of with at the moment, do you think? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I'll, I'll bring things back to, to civil conversation. Thank you. I know, right? Um, <laughs> I wish I understood her motives, though. She seems to want to get close to some of us, and I'm trying to understand how and why. Yeah, it's She's either us chosen or those two. Yeah, it's either us or get close to the uh, what's happening up north. That's what it sounds like. But yeah. Well, are we taking our with us? That's what my next question was going to be. I think we should. I still don't see any reason to bring her. Banter? Cannon fodder? Um, exactly, yo. Do you actually say cannon fodder? Crumbar? <laughs> oh no, this isn't in game. Uh, everything's in game. Remember that. <laughs> As I just got ready to shift your alignment more. Uh, this never happened, <laughs> um, You see a smash like, of the window as Crumber leaps from it. <laughs> and really, oh I'm just like own. hiding under a blanket. Um, right. Game face on. Uh, right, so I just kind of turn to the party and just uh, say to everyone, it's like, so, are we taking... I was going to say Zedreka again. What's her name again? Dekana. Dekana? I don't know why I can't remember. The thing is, Zedreka's not even been mentioned for ages. I know, I don't know why I keep thinking that name. Yeah. Just everyone is now Zedreka, okay? That's a scary world, that is, I'll tell you. <laughs> that would be. Um, I do want to live in that world. Well, you'd be Zedreka, so you'd have to. <laughs> nope. <laughs> It's Save all right, dude. Dude, it's all right because I'd be Zadreka as well. <laughs> we are well, Zadreka. We tell each other apart. Well, you're that Zadreka, and I'm this Zadreka, obviously. Wait, are we all, are we all like <laughs> our characters trapped oh, inside? <laughs> we all take control of a different limb. It's, this isn't but being it'd be drunk. like when you try to make a a new like profile online, and it's like, say. Tom Andrews is already taken this, trying to make you Tom <laughs> Andrews 1 through f one, three, four, seven, five through T. 2, 3, but you know. Yeah, uh, just like real life. Um, okay. Right, so in the known world of Zedreka, right? Um, right, so I turn to Zedreka yeah. and I ask her. Uh, <laughs> How uh, did you even get in here? <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, no. Oh, sorry, I'm just. A I shouldn't be allowed outside. Um, <laughs> you're not outside, you're inside. I am in my mind. <laughs> um, you're inside in your mind too. Oh yeah, damn it. <laughs> Good, I should probably be, this is where I probably should be then. Um, yeah. Just a slightly more padded room. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure the order have one of those rooms too, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> this is where it's going to be like, what, like next week or whatever, you're like, guys, is, 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 is anyone here from Scott? And like, you're just sit like, Cut to me in a padded room. It's like, we're all the Draco now. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like, more Yeah, he's like, coloured his face in like kind of purpley violet. He's got a silver wig on. <laughs> like, 
who is this man? We don't know. He just, he just keeps calling everyone the Draco. Right, so we can't back, get it. back in the yeah, room, back, in the back, drawing room, right, in, back in room, right. the manor, in Glitterhagen, in the world of Cadence, in the game The Keepers of the Golden Gate. Here Sorry, we are. Guys, right. Um, so Reach pretty much so, said, yeah. what, what reason is there to take her? Your reply isn't cannon fodder, it is in fact... The director. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I believe she has skills that she ha is, and knowledge that she isn't letting on just yet, but I, I think it's better to have her with us. She's very keen to come along. Another two meals and Eric might find uh, discover those skills, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. It would be better to know what skills she has before we rely on them. We're not relying on them. Right now, all we have is us. And right now, our skills are limited. I say we bring her along and see what she can offer. What about Kitty or Arya? Any thoughts on... Like I said, I, I don't care if she comes along as long as she doesn't try to like kill us or like sacrifice us. Yeah, that's why. So I guess we won't know in her. That happens. Uh, 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 um, trying to make to that. Her this would be important. Not just. So we're going to offer her to come, but you just cannot sacrifice us. Yeah, yeah the, here's the rules of engagement, <laughs> right? You can come with us. No stabbing me. <laughs> no cutting I mean, me. No sacrificing me. End of the day, it'd be five v one. No, I just want to know her method, okay. her reasons. That's the thing. I'd like to know her motivation somehow. Well, that that's a that's a bit worthy goal. Also, Crumber, it's not guaranteed. It's five v one. What if she's three midgets in a coat? Right? <laughs> you do you don't know that, right? Then it's one and a half v three. <laughs> that doesn't work out, but okay. <laughs> nah. So, I think then, as your conversation kind of continues. This is when Eric and Zadreka. Nope, it is not. Fuck you, Scott, so much. <laughs> this is when Dekana and Eric walk back in. Fucking Zadreka. <sighs> anyway. Just getting rid of the word Zadreka from the chat so I can actually try and focus on Dekana. <laughs> oh my god. Well, we're doing so well. 28 sessions, all fell apart. Sorry. Everything's a Draco now. It's just a way. <laughs> oh, some, some weird virus took over. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, Eric, Dekana, walk back in to the study thing. Did you all just instantly go quiet? Or? I would think so, yeah. I think she'll break the tension, because she obviously she's quite savvy that there is quite clearly tension in the room when she walks back in and she says so shall we get to the planning of this trip north and she just like sits down and like ah, leans, right. that's, leans that's forward a, sorry. that's a good point are we not going to go to Horizon first to well, why, don't you, why don't you have this conversation in character we really can't wait to Kana anyway. well, why don't you have that conversation in character. <laughs> okay, then I'll <laughs> I'll start. Um, are we um, guys? Are we not going to go to Horizon first to finish off our uh, our business there first? Is the kind of here at the moment? Yeah, these are all in the room. She sat down. Which is, okay. why, which is why I said our business rather than, yo, let's go hit up that princess. Not sure if we want to share all of our business yet. Yeah, plus we'd have a decent wait time to return. I can only. Well, I could do my hammer. I suppose I could do my hammer twice now, but it's 
It's it, it's costly. I'm sorry. Do you a hammer? Dakaya speaks up from the coach. Yeah, it's hammer time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like this idea that we all just kind of look at it like, what, you never travelled by a hammer before? <laughs> <laughs> I just like pull it out from my uh, waistband. I, I guess that's where it is. It's got a, on a holster on my yeah. waist, I suppose. Okay, on a belt <laughs> loop, yeah, sure. On, on, on my right side, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Every gentleman's dining wear. Yeah. <laughs> yep, <laughs> of course. To be fair, I can believe that he wouldn't want it out of his sight. Um, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so you hold this hammer, I guess, up so she can see it, or do you just motion to it? Like what? I just kind of hold it up. Like, I guess I put it on the table. Yeah, sure. I assume there's a table in front of us, like a small like coffee yeah. bag table, mm-hmm. chairs. Shaped by the power of Rainwood. <laughs> 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 thunder, thunder, thunder clap. <laughs> that just sounds painful. Yeah, to be fair, it is. Like, it's a really, really good cantrip. Um, but yeah, so, yeah, she kind of like stares at it. Now that like thing where you automatically go to touch something and then she stops herself and she goes, May I? And she looks at you, Eric. And just reach with my hand toward it. And then she goes to like kind of touch it, and there's like a kind of like tiny, you know, like a red static shock type thing from it. And she like kind of like recoils her hand a little bit and like flickers her fingers for a bit, as if getting rid of the electricity. Oops. And then she's like, "Oh, is it meant to do that?" I mean, it doesn't do it to me. I thought no one's ever tried to hold it, so. Maybe it's for you then. Probably. But Maybe yeah, you, I, you have tried lightening yourself to death before, so your feelings might be a wee bit numb still. <laughs> You've tried what? It was a book, long story. <laughs> the book's gone now. Oh. What kind of book? Um, and an open That's what book. Find out. <laughs> An openable book. Yeah, I couldn't get the gra- uh, grasp on how to open it. But it's gone now, you see. Yeah, it like disintegrated. She like again looks a bit shocked, like not expecting that to be the result of that conversation, and then she says, uh, "How did it disintegrate?" There was a lightning wall. I put it in the lightning wall and it burned. And she just kind of looks a bit taken aback, not saying anything. Moving on. I think I can charge the hammer twice before I have to recuperate now. I feel like that's is within my capability now. So you need to charge it for it to work. Indeed. And what does it do? It creates a a portal that we step through and it goes to the place where I am thinking of. Well, that's what I have gathered so far. Don't know whether that is true, but so far it's led us to the right place. She just kind of like seems to be staring at the hammer and just slowly nodding. So, do you guys want to go to Horizon or are we going to continue going north? We've only had come by and reach, say something about it. First of all, Dakana, what? Use would you be to our party if we head north for the orcs? And then she kind of like snaps out of just staring at this hammer, trying to work out what he means. And then um, she kind of looks at it and says, Well, Master Monk, before I learned of your unique methods of transport, I was going to offer you horses, even a carriage of some kind, to expedite our trip. Um, rations 
supplies, a translator if needed. We don't know who we'll meet on the way. And she kind of just goes back oh. to looking at the hammer, kind of like side eyeing it a bit, and then she looks back at you and says, However, it seems one of those uses is no longer required. Well, all of those uses would be useful, but we're pretty much got most languages covered between us, and you can supply the rest without leaving the city. Yes, but the price of it is me going with you. We cannot guarantee your safety. So all depends what we meet in the road. And she kind of just like, without mo like moving her head, she's still staring at you and she just points over at Crumbar and she says, Actually, he did guarantee my safety. Yeah, I heard that out again. Yeah. <laughs> this is. What you got? Uh, it's, uh, eyes are bigger than his head. Uh, what's that? Uh, eyes are bigger than his belly. Uh, yeah. yeah. yeah but, uh, Overconfidence is, is his weakness. Is, like, that's different. Is, well, let's put Crumbar, do you respond? Overconfident. Like, yeah. see when she points at you and says that, like, do you respond? I just look at Reach and grin. <laughs> Go, you know, you know what I'm capable you, of. You know it, baby! You know it, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I cover my mouth and I'd cough black flank spear. <laughs> 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 it's like, and I, I just kind of look at him angrily, just like, hmm. It's like, well, hardly gonna fucking take on the Wizard King, am I? Totes, well, Totes was up for it, but you know. So what he means is he I... can protect you as long as it's not a, a bit of, I don't know what you call it, but a, a reasonably strength wizard or sorcerer who's wanting you. I look at uh, Crumbar and uh, say, I think you're forgetting about the times when I guaranteed your safety. You say that to me, yeah. Yeah. No, I remember every one of them. And you must know how much of a strain it is for that to happen for everybody. The more we are, the more... Um, how do I put... Our action economy is more favourable. No? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think see when you are all kind of talking, like you know, coughing messages to each other, mentioning the Wizard King, staring at each other, growling, um, mentioning how many times you've seen each other live. Um, the kind of stands up and just says to Eric, "I'm um, just kind of like, almost as if on the side of the conversation." Um, it seems like you have a lot to discuss, and I think I'm being carefully. Avoided, and she like gestures with her hands like a circle. Um, your servants will have prepared my room for this evening. Yes. Indeed. I think once you have come to a decision, please come find me there. She kind of just like. Apologies, we do not mean to be thumbs up at rude. And she kind of just like she kind of just like. <laughs> She waves her hand as if, like... There are things that we are under obligation to others not to You need discuss. not explain. She, like, has her hand up. She's like, you need not explain to me. I will be simply awaiting your decision. I am imposing on your adventure, after all. She kind of just nods and vaguely looks at everyone and then leaves the room. Mm. So you are now alone, if that helps. Hands is she listening on the doors again? <laughs> it's up to you. Do you want to go just look outside the room? <laughs> I'll give it like 60 seconds and then I'll creep towards the door okay. for more hours and then like open and just look both ways. Yeah, it's just the just hallway. Fair enough. But. Yeah, I'm I'm just gonna say like essentially to the room. I still don't understand why she wants to be there. 
I get it. She's got financial resources she could offer, but the risk and and the the thing that the possibility of getting into dangerous situations and expecting us to protect her, not knowing if there's anything that she can do to to take care of herself. I think that that's what what makes me a bit reluctant towards this idea. She's a grown woman. She can make her own choices. She's a lady. She probably never had to, I don't know, start her own fire. Probably her own food. And I say that, and as I say that, I'm kind of like making fire in my hands and just passing it from one hand to another, kind of like a game, you know, like some yeah. people do with a, uh, we call that a, humble with a tennis drag. ball or whatever. <laughs> we call yeah, that a, more or less. a humble brag. <laughs> Yeah, but also something that made me think, you know, this is something I can do with my hands while we're thinking and talking, you know, like a... Yeah, it's effortless like, like for a you, nervous yeah. act sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, if we do get into a hairy situation and we don't believe we can protect her, I can always open a portal and she can go back if it looks dire. I think. Uh, Can I you think keep it's, your hammer always charged? Oh, uh, so as soon as we've done a jump, can you recharge again, Eric, so that we can use it at a moment's notice? I haven't tried that yet, but it's a possibility. Yes. It does give us a get out clause as such. Yeah. yeah. If you want me to just discuss that mechanically as an aside for you just now. Yeah. Eric, um, you know how much it costs to recharge it, and you know mm -hmm. how much you can supply. So if you have, as we discussed last time, all your spell slots and all your sorcery points, if your hammer's fully charged bef and you are also fully rested, which are probably going to be rare together, mm -hmm. in that scenario, you would have a jump from the hammer, and then you would have at least half of the sorcery point, like all your sorcery points that you have, which is five, would recharge it halfway. Then you'd need to burn at least five points worth of spell slots to charge it, yeah. and it would be good to go again. That would take like 30 seconds if you had to do it under pressure, give or take, maybe maybe less. Um, it depends. It'd be every round, which is six seconds, you could cash in a sorcery, like a spell slot for sorcery points. And then you would need to just use an action to like channel it all into your your hammer. Mm -hmm. So you could probably do that in what would that be? Maybe two rounds, probably. Yeah. So bonus, bonus, and action on the second round. So yeah, twelve seconds is what it would take you to do that after a fully charged hammer jump. As long as you had all your sorcery points and all your spell slots. I was gonna say like we all we do all have uh, the portion of long rest as well so yep and that saves you having to wait eight hours doesn't mm -hmm. stop the 24 hour time limit on long rests but it does oh. skip the eight hours of actually having to do nothing yeah but I'm, I'm what i'm saying is you know worst case scenario we could use a portion of long rest and like stay the best mm -hmm. yeah but in theory he could do two jumps comfortably if I didn't spell, uh, spend a lot of uh, spell slots, I'd have to spend a bit minimum. Yeah, because I mean, how many spell slots do you have of what level? And just add their numbers total, right? So, like, how many ones that equals one, how many twos equals two, add it all into a big pile, and that's how many pending sorcery points that you have. Does that mean? Mm. I think we did this maths roughly last time as well. Um, I think it just came over 20, didn't it? Like 22 or something? Something like that rings a bell. And that, that, I think that included the five sorcery Sorry. points. Yeah, because you've got six from your level threes, right? So six points there. You've got another six from your level twos. So that's 12 already. So that's a full charge hammer already. Um, and then you've got 12, 16. Yeah, so I think altogether you get 16 
that you can pull from just from your spells and you've got five sorcery points because you're a level five sorcerer so 21 mm. total so that is just two jumps and one level one spell left over yeah. which isn't the best it's something it is so you could get two jumps out of one one eric without <laughs> the hammer being charged yeah uh, i'd basically have to stick to cantrips more or less and then yeah. use the occasional level one spell if, if, if you've got it right. charged though fully then you would have whatever spells you've still got for that day plus also uh, the next day you'd have all your spells and still be able to make a, a jump uh, jump that's why yep so you'd have to charge it way. then long rest again and then you'd be 100 percent. yep and then so it would take like a day to prep that scenario but yeah that could be done how long would it take us to get enough though? So, like, if we go and buy by a car carriage, yeah. Um, is it two weeks by be... carriage or walking, by the way? What's that? Was it two weeks walking or by carriage for North? Um, walking. Well, of course, it's walking. Yeah, right, okay. Like, it's so probably half that ish. Yeah. So, yeah, I'd say that. Yeah, we'll go with that. So, what, a week if we take horses? horses. Yeah. yeah. Then we'll also have horses, so yeah. So there's that. Yeah. I mean, so I could charge it now, and then when we're leaving, there's a potential for a long rest along what, the way. What are you doing about your horizon business then? Just want to talk about that because obviously you've got the room to yourselves now. Yeah. Well, technically, we need to give her a day or two anyway, don't we? Still, probably. Mm. You've technically so. given her a day so far. You've right. given her at least one day. Right, because yeah. this this is still when this day ends, that's her whole day. She's had mm -hmm. right. Can remember you arrived in town this morning. I believe. Aye. So she's had a whole yeah. day. Yeah. Oh. I'm guessing it would be better just to leave her resting, <laughs> and we should just go up north. Yeah. Then when we return from the north, we. Mm. Go finish our business in Horizon, and we can give her any information we got from the north as well. Yeah, probably don't need to even return. Sometime when we're up there, we could do it because we just need two, three days at least. But mm. yeah, because you could easily just go from north to Horizon, then back yeah. up to the north or home or whatever. Yeah, back to Glitterhagen. Yeah. So yeah, you've got that option, or you could get Livian to send a message specifically for the attention of the princess as part of the trade thing if you wanted yeah, to do it, make it hard, slower we don't know where it is yeah. it could even just be a send as a sign when you're ready right mm -hmm. yeah could, do that. could be something slower. obviously that'll you. take that'll take yeah. time <laughs> though for yeah. it to get all the way down but that is a possibility at least because mail is a thing, right? <laughs> so, yeah. Just depends um, what you want to do. So, let's focus back in the room. So, Arya weirdly walks slowly over the, the floorboards all the way up to the wall, <laughs> opens the door, pops her head out left and right, goes, okay, closes the door back over, turns back, yeah. and then what do you say to each other? Okay, so she really has gone. Um, I do worry about her motives and about what she essentially brings to the table in in well, irrespective of what she is willing to provide financially. Financially she'll be really useful but I do think she's more of a lady st stab in the back waiting to happen. But <laughs> I mean like this is one of Eric's sisters right? So it's like... No. 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 <laughs> this is no. Sis no. Sis his sensible sister doesn't like. Yeah. Oh, this is right. a woman from a family who didn't want to give them aid. So she's actually not Right, okay, because I'm... Right, okay. Now keep in mind, well, her parents, the kind of still has parents that are 
running her yeah, family. Yeah, it was her parents who. Yeah. So it wasn't specifically Decana, but it, you don't know what Decana thinks about that because nobody's asked her. Yeah. Um, yeah. And Livian obviously doesn't like her at all. Well, yeah, like for 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 her sake, let's just take her with us, and you know. Now, now if anything bad, and now if she turns out to be bad, I don't feel. Would feel so bad about you know, dropping a hammer in her ass because like it would be what killing one of Eric's families. Let's take her with us. Let's take her with us. It'll be funny. To be fair, Grumbar's kind of already said he would. So it just depends if you change your mind in this meeting or not. Mm. I'm down with taking her with us. I think everybody rolls their eyes and looks at each other. When you said that. Yeah, of course you are. You're all filthy. I think at this point, just to stop it dragging on, Crumbar just is kind of getting a bit agitated and he's just like, right, this is going on for ages, so I just kind of like slam my hand on the table and go, Guys, she's coming with us. I'll take responsibility if anything happens. I kind of took my head at him and go, Sure, you won't do that? Have you perhaps considered what would happen if, you know, the worst happens and she gets killed while essentially on our watch? Nothing gained, nothing gained. How would we explain this and to whom? We don't know if she's perhaps the protege of, of somebody that's insanely powerful and insanely rich and could have our heads. Well, we we know don't she really comes know from much about family. her. Mm. Money isn't everything. Money can't buy you everything. I can't buy you wizard training from the Wizard King, no doubt. <sighs> and it can buy you mercenaries. Orc mercenaries, so maybe? <sighs> I don't know if they bother for a human coin. I don't think they'd bother for any coin. I just kind of look at you and like, careful what you say, Reach. Hey, you fight for human coin. I human fight coin for anyway. I, I fight for a purpose, not for the money. <laughs> Shows you his character sheet and points at Paladin. <laughs> <laughs> Opens up right. character sheet, points at that that's like money doesn't mean lots to me. <laughs> anyway, I guess we've pretty much agreed. Anyway, we're taking her with us, but yeah, we're all ready to stab her in the back before she stabs us <laughs> in the back first. <laughs> pretty much, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right. Okay, I'm off to bed. <laughs> yeah, probably a Please. good idea. Thank I don't think don't. we're going to be achieving anything tonight. Anything else? Good night, everybody. And she just walks off, like, not really storming out, but definitely a bit, like, you know, annoyed that it's come to this. Hmm. <laughs> that makes sense, yeah. Does Andy linger back in the drawing room thing, or is everybody heading off? Can I look around the room for a bottle of wine? I mean, there's a bar, in the, is there not? Yeah, there's like a kind of sideboard type thing that's got like various decanters on it, and with different liquids. I'll just walk over, pick up a bottle of wine, and head to my room. As is leaving, I go, yes, you can take a bottle with you. I just go look at him all good because I'm taking one and just kind of laugh as I walk away. Don't cast the lightning bolt just go. yet. <laughs> What's that? I presume that was the cheap stuff, Eric. Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't too expensive that one. <laughs> it wasn't even wine. It probably isn't, to be honest. Gin. I was going to say, it's, it's, it is probably something like gin or like a bourbon or something like that, isn't it? So. I don't normally put one uh, in the can uh, right, After so. dinner it would be more liqueur or a spirit, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so everybody heads off to the rooms. Eric, are you going to go update Takana? Yep. 
and make sure I pick up my hammer. Okay, yep, yeah, cool. <laughs> the, the rim claims it. <laughs> yeah. I'm not leaving it. So yeah. It's my house, but it's my hammer. My, my precious. So yeah, you head off, off to a room, do you knock, do you walk in, do you awkwardly stand outside fixing your hair first? Like, <laughs> no, just knock. <laughs> like, fix his hair in reflection of hammer. <laughs> well, mm, yeah. No, I just knock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and um, the door opens, like, before you get the second knock on it. And she just stares at you, she goes, Finished discussing so soon. Yeah, um, we, we decided we'd let you come with us. And she looks very, very pleased by this. And then she says, Wonderful. Could you see to this being delivered tonight? And she hands you like a letter. Where to? My family estate, of course, within Glitterhagen. I will get one of my many fine folk to deliver it for you. Thank you. Are you staying up? Or are you turning in for an early morning? I'll be uh, charging my hammer just in case we need a uh, quick escape at some point. And oh, she looks like an I know, I know, right? <laughs> Let's yeah. box that up just now. And she looks at you and she goes, Is this a private event or would I be able to see this in action? You can watch if you wish. She wants to see you play with your hammer. Yeah. <laughs> Breach. Yeah, that's definitely <laughs> something I've not heard before, but yeah. <laughs> Some people invent their code, I'm not even joking. Yeah. <laughs> so, she looks excited and she says, is there somewhere special you need to do this? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I can... Do it wherever. And she opens her door wider. Okay. Let, <laughs> let me just call a servant first for the letter to be delivered. Of course. I imagine there's a little bell or some part. Mm -hmm. I can just hit. Yeah. I'm just gonna hit that. Yeah, you are. I mean, um. Oh my god, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, you ring the bell, as it were, you like and subscribe, a servant turns up, and it's like a where's Wally for these things now, isn't it? And then a servant appears, takes a letter from you, you obviously say deliver it. In fact, do you? I'm assuming you say deliver it to the Sephir estate. Yes. Cool. And obviously they send somebody to go deliver that off. Good. Then do you head inside? Yeah. Cool. So you head inside and do you want to describe it from here? Um, there's a window, uh, big blue and similar to the rest of the house, depicting family colours. Mm -hmm. um, big rug, rug on the floor, blue, with the family crest on it. Uh, bed with like, I don't know, drapes around it. Blue as well. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of blue here, by the way. Uh, wooden flooring, kind of like a wardrobe, then a chair with a desk. Maybe a bookshelf. <laughs> Maybe a big shelf. Maybe. Yeah, it's preliminary, you know. <laughs> Here, are the Here are the books. I'm not destroying it. <laughs> These ones I can open. 
But yeah, so what do, what do we see Eric do then as you're walking? Just kind of like sit down in the middle of the floor and put the hammer on the floor in front of me. And she kind of just awkwardly stands next to the bed and goes, So where should I stand? Is this too close? Mm -hmm. Wherever you like. Just don't know about touching it when I'm doing this. And she kind of just sits like facing you with the hammer between the two of you. Just so this close is fine. Maybe. I've never had someone sit so close. And then she kind of like she has like both of her like hands kind of clasped and like a kind of joint fist, and she's got that like her chin resting on that as she's sit cross-legged staring. And yeah, well, here I go. And I kind of just start trading sorcery points into it. Yeah. Initially. It do so. Uh, I don't know what spells we want to give Um, one, two, and three, three ones. Cool. Mark them as such. Obviously, you know how to do this. Yeah, and it goes to sorcery points, and then they go into the hammer again. <laughs> Everything into the hammer. So yeah, yeah. we have this um. As you start pouring the sorcery points in, obviously they go first, and obviously all the tattoos start to like tear open again, the kind of scars, the blue. And then um, your eyes kind of like flare up blue as well. She just come out again, drinking the whole thing in, um, not saying a single word, just looks, you know, as wide-eyed as possible. And um, obviously it all turns red as it all seeps into the hammer and the jewel starts to glow on it. And then, obviously even more of the glow as they all the blue veins all start to turn red all up your arms as they kind of creep up and you see this like red glow from beneath your clothing as well um, hinting at more tattoos elsewhere and scars um, as you're pouring all of this like raw magic that you're actually like tearing out of you uh, to fill the hammer and yeah and I think um, we just kind of end that scene on a shot of a uh, her bathed in red light as all this energy seeps into a hammer and we'll take our break here yeah hammer not evil <laughs> at all <laughs>